the ancient spirits of the light and dark have been released. So I assume that's referring to Bob Ross and Pitbull? We also got a new item, the Pone Hammer. The word Pone first appeared in the 2010s when children playing Call of Duty wanted to insult their opponents but didn't want their parents hearing them swear. We're gonna use it to spawn new ores in the world. Oh, no titanium, gotta create a new world. I've heard some people complain about master mode that it isn't hard enough, but check this out, this is a fight in normal mode. Pretty easy, right? Now this is master mode. Look at the mechanics, the intricacy. 300 actions per second. Gaming is a sport. But now that we're in hard mode, I am gonna need some better strategies to beat the bosses. And the best way to learn is to look to the past. So today, we're gonna have a quick history lesson. In medieval times, catapults were used to fling boulders, knocking down the walls of castles. But after a while, they realised this wasn't enough. A boulder could only hit one object. They needed something that could cause collateral damage. So they started using fire, and so are we. This is my fire wand. It inflicts fire damage, so they take damage over time while they burn. But the best part is, you can give this effect to any weapon, like a sword or the pone hammer. With this item, the magma stone. With it, my swings now deal fire damage. Once the fires had started, the people running the siege thought, we can do better than this, what's something else we can fling? And they looked over and saw a dead body with the plague. And I said, Terraria, I hardly know her. Oh, uh, right, anyway, um, instead of causing physical damage, the bodies would spread sickness throughout the city. And to represent that in Terraria, I'll be using cursed flames. You can imbue weapons with more than one damage over time effect. I just need to craft the flask which I can't do because I forgot to beat the queen bee. I should get some new armor before the fight. Now it's the time for the part of the game where you mine the first hard mode ore, craft a pickaxe, mine the second ore, craft a pickaxe, mine the third ore, and make some armor. Ooh, a fairy. These apparently attempt to lead the player to valuable treasures. I bet it's gonna lead me to something awesome, like a gun that shoots sharks, or a jetpack with swords, or a t two crystal hearts. After I've beaten the wall of flesh, I already have 400 health, I don't need this. Oh well, let's go back to looking for adamantine. Damn worms. I'm dead man, you can stop already. Oh, I get it. I found a wizard down here. He says he got lost, but I think he just likes being bound in rope. Either way, I bought his crystal ball. Mirror, mirror on the wall. What is the meaning of it all? The answer you seek is clear. The meaning of life is to fail. There seems to be a lot of corruption spreading toward my house, so I'll throw some magical powder to reduce the bad energy. Hey guys, look, I found a new way to kill enemies. You see this evil looking decrepit old man? Now if I use purification powder, he becomes a tax collector. So no difference. Uh, I can't find enough adamantite. Let me just get up Terra map and... There we go, enough for a full set. All right, I'm finally ready to fight Queen Bee. Just gotta make it to the jungle and set up the arena. So starting the fight seems harder than the actual fight will be. Instead, I decided to fight it in enraged mode where it moves so fast, the sound effects can't even keep up. But I won the fight, which means I can get the Witch Doctor NPC to make me disease-ridden flasks. Some of you said my building skills were a bit lacking, so I've made my houses much more beautiful this time. If you don't like it, you don't have an eye for the abstract. I also set up another exquisite house in the desert so I can teleport between them. Turns out, the key to teleportation is happiness. So humans, we should be able to do it once we solve these small issues. Come on guys. Teleporting. Now that I can craft a cursed flask, my pwn hammer sets fire to enemies and gives them coughing fits. Wait, it's raining. I can reveal my third part of the plan. These sieges would last months, maybe years, and once December hit, the cold was the new enemy. Already diseased, the people were sure to succumb to the harsh cold, developing hypothermia and frostbite rapidly, the only hope of warmth being hit by a boulder on fire. And in Terraria, there is Frost Armor. Inflicts Frostburn on all attacks. With this, I'll have three separate forms of continuous damage. And to get the armor set, I need to kill this 10-foot beast. So my strategy here is to dodge the lasers and hit him with my big bang. Oh, then I'm going to run around here? and turn him out. When he's I think I made a wrong it, turn to the reptile store. Does anyone know there. where Wallaby Way is? So after I beat him without any troubles, I can do three different types of damage all at once. But I have to admit, the Pone Hammer isn't a good weapon. I now need something to replace it. Which brings me to the final stage of the medieval siege. It wasn't just the disease that killed people, it was the people, the panic. People would loot houses, throw knives at each other, blame the disease on the newly built towers emitting magical waves. 
And to represent this, I'll use my own throwing knife, the Shadow Flame Knife. It carries all the effects we've got thus far and adds a new one. To get it, we need to kill the Goblin Army. So I waited near the border of my world and killed any foreign looking creature taking their clothes. Then, after inviting them into my house, I set their entire race on fire and took their valuables. I think this game's turned me into a war criminal. But now I have the Shadow Flame Knife with fire, curse, ice, shadow flame. Look at all the pretty colours. I have an impenetrable wall of rainbow knives. It's all I've ever wanted. Look at these corruptors. They're suffering from four sources of damage at once. Five if you include the stab wound from the knife. Six if you count the fear I instill. I realise there's a lot of new players watching, and I'd say the best bit of advice that I can give is to use the Shield of Cthulhu. It's the best item in the game. You can dodge attacks, bounce off enemies, rush through doors to make dramatic entrances. It does seem like the corruption is growing back though. No amount of essential oil will fix this. I'm going to convert my home into a hallowed biome. Instead of evil flying worm creatures, I'll have murderous unicorns. Kind of a lesser of two evils situation. Which reminds me of something political. Can't remember what though. Time to use my acquired methods against a city, Skeletron Prime. I don't know, it kind of sounds like it could have been a city. I chose this boss because my dagger ricochets and it can hit multiple of the arms at once. The hardest part of Master Mode isn't really the boss, it's the random enemies that come up to surprise you. Like I'm fighting this gigantic skeleton boss over here that's lit up and I'm trying to dodge everything and then this barely visible dude comes out and does more damage than the boss. This run was going well until a random wraith showed up and knocked me into Slipknot's keyboard player. In this one, Skeletron left because it was past his bedtime. And then it finally happened. I'd won. And as those outside the castle claimed their prize, I questioned. Was it worth it? Did I have to end the lives of all these creatures? Am I a good person? Oh, 82 gold!